Hi there, Fiddler Dan here, and today I want to talk all about tailpieces and the effect that they have on sound. Uh, during this time, I'm going to draw a little bit on my background as a physicist, so I hope that doesn't get in the way, but uh, you can find out more about my background uh, if you like. So tailpieces are um, integral to the sound production on a violin, and especially for the tuning. So whether you like the more traditional look of a tailpiece on a very untraditional violin here uh, with a single fine adjuster or you are interested more in uh, these more modern style tailpieces with the inbuilt tuners um, there's there's quite a lot to unpack so I want to just go through that and um, let you know what I think <clears throat> so firstly violins are designed uh, not just to play the note that you're playing but to resonate sympathetically with that note. So when you think you're playing something like the uh, the A string, actually the other strings are vibrating a little bit as well. And this is really obvious with some notes. Like if I play the D note on the A string, you can hear the D, the D string vibrating, and we call that sympathetic vibration. It's vibrating with it. If I block that string from vibrating, listen to the difference it makes in the sound. It's a lot quieter. Actually, you're getting some overtone vibrations in the G string as well, so let's block that as well. And I'll block the E string as well. So here we hear E, a D, and let's bring back in that sympathetic vibration. So that's really what makes uh, a violin work and make some of the fabulous tones that it can make, uh, especially in the keys that um, vibrate sympathetically with, with those open strings. What's uh, also interesting and important for this conversation is the role that the strings play on the other side of the bridge. So actually, we think we're playing these notes, but these are all vibrating down here as well, and they have a, a contribution to the resonance of the uh, violin as well. Not as much as up here, but still there's quite a bit going on there. So uh, particularly if you're playing a better instrument, knowing and understanding what's going on on this side uh, can help uh, improve the sound of your violin and, um, and really get the most from it. So we call this... Um, on the other side on the other side of the bridge here we've got a number of factors we've got what's called the after length that is the length of the string here uh, and then we've got the tailpiece itself so we've got its weight its contribution to resonance and um, all of these contribute to the sound that it makes so let's look at uh, a number of tailpieces and look at how much they weigh This is, uh, this is a traditional French style tailpiece. Tail and you can see it doesn't weigh very much there. It comes in at 30, 13 grams. If, however, we add some finer justice to that, we're coming in at 34 grams. So that's actually getting quite heavy. The finer justice themselves, let me find some here. On their own, they don't actually weigh too much. About, what's going on there? About five grams. So if we, um, if we add one for just say the E string, which you see uh, on a lot of higher end violins, um, they're adding very little weight to it. And of course we all know the E string is a much higher tension string and a fine adjuster is really useful there. Uh, it's also really useful, if you think about your playing position, uh, these two pegs here are easier to tune. The A string you can kind of tune, 
but the E string and with a high tension starts to get really quite difficult to tune. So there's a pure convenience factor of being able to reach around here and just make fine adjustments. Uh, particularly if you need to tune quickly and you can't really stop for long in what you're doing. So um, that's why these um, inbuilt inbuilt adjusters in the tailpiece have become really popular, especially in recent years. We also see uh, tailpieces, so that's an ebony tailpiece, but we see um, tailpieces made out of other woods like, uh, like boxwood. Um, we might see aluminium tailpieces and um, of course the perennial favorite, the, the ebony. So what's going on there is their timber and timber resonates and resonates in certain ways. So you've got its weight to consider um, as, as well as its resonance. And um, particularly in something like uh, classical stringed instruments, tradition is really important. And, and so a lot of people like to have a very traditional in instrument. And so they want the bare minimum of technology. But I have to say, uh, these more modern tail pieces just get, are very light, and um, well, they're very light, and they've got built-in tail pieces, so good for convenience and actually really good for sound as well. Whether you're going for uh, something that's uh, made in in China or you want to pony up and get something from um, from Germany. Um, you get a bit of a, a slight quality difference there, but I have to say that it's um, that it's not huge. So another big factor is um, what we call the after length, and that is just switch my camera. Hang on, and that is the length of the string that's from here to here. Now it turns out this is actually pretty important because these strings are vibrating in sympathetic overtones of the strings that are vibrating here. So you've got to get that after length right. So let's say uh, here's the A string and let's listen to the after length on the D string. So that's actually an octave up. So there's there's some extra tones that you're going to get for free if you've tuned this to be the right wavelength so that it supports these other strings. And so that's a very important, uh, simple adjustment that you can do. Uh, it's not all just about the aesthetics of uh, making the tailpiece nice. We want to get the length right here uh, so that we're getting that correct after length there. So the astute amongst you will have noticed, well, hey, hang on a second. What about when we add a fine adjuster? This really is the problem. If I add a fine adjuster here, that after length there has suddenly become a whole lot shorter. So I won't get the benefit of the, um, of the higher order resonance. Now on the E string, that's not such a problem. Because it's got no higher string there uh, to supply that. So that's okay, or to support. But when we start to add that to these, we start to uh, affect the resonance. So to do that, we would either need a shorter tailpiece um, or not use them at all or move to something that has an inbuilt adjuster if we want to use um, if we want to use fine adjusters. And so what happens is in a lot of music shops, generalist ones in particular, they'll sell you a violin. They won't sell you this one, this is an old country fiddle. They'll sell you a violin with a tailpiece and one fine adjuster. And you think to yourself, hey, that must be a professional level instrument because that's what you see on all the professional instruments. And, and that's great uh, in terms of an aesthetic and a classical aesthetic, and it works really well. But if you're buying that and later on you want to add on some fine adjusters, and hey, you can get them uh, fairly cheaply on eBay, you might add them on, but they're not actually going to support this, the tone production of your violin. You'd be much better off moving to one of these tail pieces uh, to get your fine adjusters so that you can improve the sound. The sound. So in general, uh, I tend to uh, really support my customers uh, using these as fine adjusters. And, um, but of course, I'm very happy to support 
uh, if they're using these, but they just need to understand what's going on here and, and the trade-off. So that's a little bit about sound production and the importance of the tailpiece. Uh, thank you so much for listening, and uh, I look forward to talking to you soon.